Our conjecture that there is a lost yet once highly advanced ancient civilization could be proven beyond doubt by one continent in particular. Antarctica, for many millennia, this land has been encased, perfectly preserved, laying beneath miles of ancient ice. The Piri Rees map, something which we have discussed in the past, has long been argued to prove just that, long claimed as showing that of the landmass of Antarctica free of ice. If true, it would have been impossible to have created, according to modern paradigm, thought to have originated from the embers of the great fire of Alexandria, this catastrophe, a tragic loss to man's understanding of our own origins. Yet, this map survived, clearly displaying what many believe to be the continent of Antarctica, before becoming what is now a frozen ice cap at the pole of our planet. It is now an incredibly inhospitable place, one of the reasons we feel there may be intact, undisturbed ruins which may dot the land, known to be the driest place on Earth, and in addition to this compelling possibility of submerged yet highly advanced ruins, there may be many other unexplained anomalies that, due to their incredibly remote geographical placement, across some of the world's now most impenetrable natural obstacles recording some of the lowest temperatures on Earth, if proven beyond doubt to exist, would be proof of a preserved pre-Ice Age existence for advanced man. Yet due to this immense cold, and the fact that it is a largely unexplored tundra capable of killing even the most experienced of explorers, many things which rest here remain unexplored. Yet just like that of the face of the moon, one must ask the question, just what could be laying there? buried within or resting upon this giant ice sheet many miles deep. Objects just like the anomalies discovered in Roswell, New Mexico in July 1947, which, although strongly argued by officials as that of a United States Army Air Force's balloon which crashed at tremendous velocity at a ranch near Roswell, which many claim was in fact a UFO which crashed would inevitably be covered up by whatever power was capable of not only visiting such anomaly, but retrieving it. Crashing into the seemingly endless tundra, and our next item of interest could behold just as controversial in origin as that of the causation for what many claim as the Roswell Conspiracy, a truth so controversial only top military personnel would be privy to. This remarkable image taken by satellite clearly displays an as yet unexplored anomaly. Resting at the basin of a hilltop, it presumably crashed into, with its velocity upon impact sliding the mysterious object down the side of the mountain. When other such objects have been discovered in the past, indeed in the same way as that of amateur sleuths, poring over satellite images looking for these exact features, Military vehicles have been later snapped at these same locations, unquestionable proof of the world's government's interest in such discoveries, not only due to the environment, but also its remoteness. Found in permanently frozen areas could mean that if such objects do indeed turn out to be that of an alien craft, could also be in a condition to be successfully reversed-engineered if not repaired by man. A technological explosion would inevitably occur, a lucrative operation indeed. So, we find it curious that several such events have been claimed to have occurred since 1947. Could this also be posited to be as a result of this exact claim scenario? Discovered, retrieved, reverse-engineered, and finally either adapted for military purpose or commercial profits? What is this thing laying far away in the frozen Antarctic? Is it indeed a crashed alien vehicle? We find the anomaly highly compelling. Specialist researchers in Volgograd, Russia have discovered over a dozen ancient disc-shaped objects which they strongly believe to be the remnants of several crashed UFOs, including one object which is over 4 meters in diameter. 
According to experts, these strange, out-of-place disks are coated in a thick layer of tungsten, a high-density metal often used in military technology. Kosmopoisk, the team who made the discoveries, is a notorious Russian UFO and cryptozoology research group. They were performing excavations in the district in an attempt to locate these specific unknown objects. They believe, yet will not share where this information originated from, that these tungsten disks are in fact the remnants of several alien craft which crashed in the area during a quote, event. We had already found about a dozen of these disks. Most of them had a diameter of around one meter. At Kuzbas, we uncovered a disk-shaped object with a diameter of nearly two meters. But this new disk is a unique and impressive find, a member of the team said. The shape of the 4-meter disk is extremely similar to that of our modern-day interpretations of UFOs, and it has clearly given UFO hunters a lot to talk about. It is, as yet, unknown what is within these strange disks of metal. Could there possibly be the remains of ancient pilots? The fact that they are made with a thick outer layer of tungsten is highly compelling. Tungsten is the metal of choice when it comes to high temperatures this being due to it having the highest melting point of all known metals. It is a prime choice for withstanding the heat from entering Earth's atmosphere. One of the main reasons for its use within military hardware, such as orbital missiles. The newly found disk has been transported to the Zernovsky Museum, where scientists are studying it in an attempt to establish its age and the exact composition of the materials within. Although they clearly reject the possibility of it being an alien craft, they themselves do not know exactly what these disks are, where they came from, how they came into being, or indeed what may lay inside. Earlier this year, another mysterious tungsten-coated disk was discovered in Russia by a mining company near the city of Belovo. The mysterious 1.2-meter disk was located at a depth of 40 meters within the mine strongly suggesting that it is very ancient. Archaeologists performed several tests and reluctantly concluded that the perfectly circular object was somehow made by man in the very distant past, though they severely lacked any explanation as to how that was even possible. More information regarding the objects will hopefully be made available after experts analyze them in the Zernovsky Museum in Russia. We will keep you posted. There are many unexplainable ruins upon our planet, whose age, or indeed true origins, are still an enigma to be unraveled. However, we feel that, thanks to ours and many others' astute and devoted research, we do now have a very thorough understanding of past lost civilizations' capabilities. In some areas, there is undoubtedly more than one advanced ancient phase of building work. For instance, we feel that the ancient pyramids of Giza, ancient relics photographed from almost every angle, now, thanks to alternative research and in-depth scientific investigations, shows clear indication of at least three phases. These three phases are also possibly evident at many other ancient sites, in particular Peru. What's important regarding these phases is that although they have undoubtedly been accomplished, at vastly different times in history, they are all incredibly advanced. In fact, they are far more advanced than any ancestral attempts to recreate them, which can be found throughout our own thoroughly academically documented history. This throws up some controversial implications. For example, did this ancient civilization, just like ours, develop to a point where they were capable of space travel? Or perhaps, a more interesting posit, were these most sophisticated and indeed ancient ruins left by a civilization who actually traveled here from another planet to begin with? Perhaps Mars? Since its discovery, Mars has been the subject of countless theories regarding the possibility of past life having once flourished upon its surface. There are even those who have proposed and relentlessly searched for an ancient advanced human civilization having once inhabited its red landscape. We have indeed shared a number of Martian theories, supported by compelling physical evidences from its surface, 
including the mystifying cleaning events which have been experienced by each rover while still able to move on the planet. Although many of the most compelling, possibly ancient artifacts found upon the Martian surface have indeed been covered by numerous sleuths, we feel the following object's possible identity may have been overlooked. Pictured within a NASA image known as Sol 746, presumably taken on the 746th day, it shows a perfect sphere resting in the red dust. Although noticed, its puzzling characteristics, surprisingly, have yet to be linked with one of the most recognizable UFO shapes of the modern age, the metallic sphere. These objects, not only witnessed, documented, and video recorded on nearly every continent on Earth, they have also been the object most often recorded on many inches of unexplained NASA footage from low Earth orbit, lunar, and now, we feel, much further afield. Could this mysterious sphere actually be a crashed metallic UFO? Although spheres appear in nature under the identification of land pearls, its origins would have involved tremendous amounts of water, something that has not been seen on Mars for an extremely long time. Could this mysterious sphere, photographed by NASA, actually be that of a crashed metallic UFO? We find the proposition highly compelling. On April the 17th, 1897, an incredible event would occur in a small farm within Aurora, Texas. According to the locals, an alien craft came streaking down towards their farmhouse before dramatically crashing through a windmill and into a nearby field. The incident, now known as the Aurora UFO incident, was strangely similar to the Roswell crash. The people who lived on this extremely remote farm would actually discover alien corpses within the alien wreckage. On the 19th of April, 1897, Dallas Morning News, written by Aurora resident S. E. Hayden, alleged that the UFO is said to have hit a windmill on the property of a judge J. S. Proctor two days earlier at around 6 a.m., resulting in its crash. A pilot, who was reported to have been not of this world and Martian-looking, according to a reported Army officer from nearby Fort Worth, did not survive the crash, subsequently buried with Christian rites at the nearby Aurora Cemetery. And the cemetery does indeed contain a Texas Historical Commission marker mentioning the incident. Reportedly, wreckage from the crash site was dumped into a nearby well, while some ended up with the alien in the grave. Adding to the mystery was the story of Mr. Brawley Oates, who purchased Judge Proctor's property around 1935. Oates cleaned out the debris from the well in order to use it as a water source, but later developed an extremely severe case of arthritis. He later claimed that he was convinced it to have been a result of the contaminated alien water. However, not only is there clearly extremely compelling details here, some of which clearly need to be investigated further, there is also the site of an alien grave. On December 2, 2005, UFO Files undertook an investigation related to the incident, titled Texas's Roswell. Their episode featured a 1973 investigation led by Bill Case, an aviation writer for the Dallas Times-Herald and the Texas State Director of Mutual UFO Network, MUFON. MUFON investigated the Aurora Cemetery. They discovered a rather peculiar stone that was, in fact, a headstone, which depicts an alien craft. This stone signifies the resting place of what most of the town are convinced was an alien being. The team received very strange readings from metal detectors when exploring the grave. MUFON asked for permission to exhume the site, but the cemetery association declined permission. After the MUFON investigation, the marker mysteriously disappeared from the cemetery, and a 3-inch pipe was placed into the ground. MUFON's metal detectors no longer picked up the strange metal readings from the grave. Thus, it is now largely presumed that the artifacts, along with remains, have been secretly removed from the grave. MUFON's report eventually stated that the evidence was inconclusive, but did not rule out the possibility of that strange event actually occurring on the night of 1897. Although the cemetery associations still do not permit exhumation, 
ground-penetrating radar has been used on the grave. However, the condition has badly deteriorated, and the radar was not able to conclusively prove what's still there. Could there really have once been an alien buried in this small corner of Aurora? Sadly, we may never know for sure. In July 2012, a curious Google Earth image was discovered by Russian UFO researcher Valentin de Tarim. The image quickly made its way around the media, with varying reactions. Andrew Fleming from the British Antarctic Survey told the UK newspaper The Mail Online that the object was clearly a simple crevasse in the ground. They can be tens of meters deep, nothing unusual, it's certainly not a UFO. Well it seems he may be right, however, an image purporting to be from the same site taken one year earlier has been uncovered. Researchers looking at previous satellite images of the same site taken in April and December 2011, found what appeared to be four massive vehicles parked in the snow, pointed towards a mysterious object. There appears to be more than a simple crevasse going on in this image. What appears to be going on is that a huge scientific research center has been deployed to a meaningless location in an icy desert. Which just so happens to be by an object and strange feature in the ice, that looks all for the world like a crashed aircraft pattern, only for it to completely vanish a year later. What should we make of these earlier satellite images? While some reports identify the shapes as tanks, if they really are vehicles, they're massive in size, probably around 70 feet in length. There are no tire tracks, but they could have been covered by snow or blown away. They look more like research centers, also note the drift patterning around them towards the object, is this camouflage canvas, why are all the drifts in the same direction and none on the other side of the vehicles? Is it a crashed alien craft? If it was, I would have definitely filled in the hole afterwards. Researcher Isaac Kwa has published some startling yet not widely known details regarding some unusual space debris that was found in northern Saskatchewan in 1968. It is the largest UFO fragment ever found and was later definitively concluded to have come from space. However, at the time the Canadian military and government could not definitively explain what it was from and somehow managed to escape the clutches of secrecy. Also the Canadian government has been in a mode of disclosure for some time anyway, making UFO documents available for decades at the archives in Ottawa. Only recently they scanned several thousand documents and put them online. The found space debris is one of a number of known, documented crashes of objects in Canada. If you were a government official, how would you react to receiving an official memo with a title beginning UFO found? What if the memo also referred to a metal fragment, examination of which revealed the exhibit had likely formed part of a vehicle that traveled in outer space and attached relevant photographs? Well, one Canadian official received such a memo in November 1968, along with related memos and photos of the metal fragment. I do not recall seeing any discussion of this memo in any of the UFO books I've read. Dated the 14th of November 1968 from the F Division of CIB, presumably the Criminal Investigation Branch of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, entitled UFO found in Northern Saskatchewan is one part of a set of documents and photos relating to a piece of metal. This astounding official memo states that examination revealed the exhibit had likely formed part of a vehicle that traveled in outer space. The relevant documents indicate that a 99% titanium fragment with a white ceramic-like crystal material on one side was found in or around October 1968, but tests indicated it had been down for more than 90 days in the Wollaston Lake area of Saskatchewan, Canada. This other official memo, dated the 24th of October 1968, discloses that the object was titanium 99% pure, 4 foot long and 2.5 feet wide, and weighed between 10 and 15 pounds. This makes the fragment the largest alien piece from a satellite that has ever landed on Earth. That memo indicates that a local newspaper, the Leader Post, was aware of the find. A handwritten annotation indicates the NRC should release information about the find, including the fact that the RCMP lab identified the object. Yet no media coverage ever happened. Man-made satellites are also supposedly made of aluminium not pure titanium. 
Here are some crashed satellite images, note, none come close to the alien looking appearance of the Canadian fragment. A report dated the 29th of October 1968 gives the results of a determination of the chemical composition of the object, indicating it was high purity titanium. Higher than previously believed, freelance artist, known as freelance underscore xenarchist, accepted a challenge to create a concept of what part of the craft the fragment may have come from. What do you think it is, was it actually part of a downed UFO? It appears that this is exactly what it was, if you go by publicly disclosed official records. Does this titanium fragment found in Canada, answer the greatest question of our age?